Good afternoon or good morning to everyone on the line and thank you for joining us for today's Elsevier live webinar. So today's session is going to be a good one. I think you're in for a treat. Um, it's the enticingly named How to Succeed at Medical School and it's one of our most popular, I think in fact the popular, the most popular rather, session of our 2021 Elsevier live webinars to date. So today you're going to be guided through how to succeed at medical school, from why good grades are important, motivation and mindset to setting goals, planning and preparation, all with that never give up attitude. We've got a fantastic speaker for you today in Dr. Raman Mersad. And before I hand over the reins, just a little bit about Dr. Mersad. Dr. Merzad is a physician, scientist, and author who's worked closely with attendings and hundreds of students, interns, residents, and fellows throughout his career. He's an American board certified in internal medicine and works as a, and works as a phys specialized physici physician, excuse me, um, at Yale New Haven Hospital, where he was also a clinical instructor at Yale School of Medical. Medicine. Currently, he's pursuing a plastic and reconstructive surgery residency at Rhode Island Hospital, Brown University, and hence, with his background, brings both medical and surgical knowledge. Dr. Mer Merzad has conducted extensive scientific research in multiple areas in medicine, surgery, and education, and has over 40 peer reviewed articles and over 22 abstracts published. He's written five books including Student Success in Medical School, which was published by Elsevier um, this year, 2021. And it's on the screen right now, if you can see it in front of you. Um, he's also con contributed to six medical and surgical textbooks. He's an international lecture, uh, lecturer and has lectured at over 100 schools for thousands of students across Europe and the world. So I think that I would be right in saying that you're in pretty expert hands today. So without okay. further ado, I'm going to hand over to Roman. Over to you. Thank you, Debs. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you very much. Um, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I am very thrilled and privileged that this was the most um, signed up uh, lecture in, in 2021. Uh, that's amazing. That's great. I hope that this lecture will give you guys as much as um, it has taught me <clears throat> in life, because the purpose here is really to inspire you and, and motivate you in to not only succeed in medical school, but into succeed in life in general. And there are tricks and systems that you can adopt to do that. Now, I heard that there were some people that had some problems with the audio. I, I'm, I'm sure Debs and the team will look into that. I hope you guys can hear me, however, and see me. If not, just write it in the comments. So um, <clears throat> this is the table of content. And um, this is uh, uh, some of the things that we're going to go through. And the first thing that I want to kind of just shortly, uh, Deb did a great uh, introduction about me, but I just want to give you guys a, a short summary. This is the most boring part of the whole lecture, but just so you guys get an idea of who I am, what I do, etc. Because that's I think that's important to get to know the person that's presenting things to you. So I was born in Iran, um, but when I was three, the 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 Iran Iraq War hit. So we had to refugee. So my family were refugee to Sweden. So I actually grew up in Sweden. Um, and and uh, after medical school, I had done a lot of research in a in a not so hot area at that point, uh, but that became very hot and and uh, uh, nowadays. So over the past like five ten years, and I was lucky. I worked hard, and we 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 got very lucky with our studies, and we started developing a drug. So I came to the U.S. and pursued first an internal medicine residency. I went to Harvard for a research fellowship. Uh, and then once my research really took off and it was in the field of plastic surgery and hand surgery, uh, I decided to pursue uh, another type of specialty. So I'm currently in the plastic surgery program. And um, um, I also have, cause I was all, all, always interested in business. And so uh, ever since I was a kid, uh, and uh, so I ha also have a master of business administration from UMass and a master of science in healthcare leadership as well. 
because leadership is is something that I I'm, I'm very passionate about. I've been involved in startups, investing, business consulting, as I mentioned, pharmaceutical drug development, and I also publish books. I, I love writing. So this is a little bit about me, just so you can get a general idea of that. I'm not only involved in just medicine. I'm involved in other fields as well. And so I have, I have truly um, encountered various types of people, personalities, um, um, fields. And so I've learned a thing or two, and that's what I want to share with you guys today. So I'm going to start off by saying, by asking, um, and you guys can think because I can't hear you guys, but you guys can think, what is the big secret of life? Have you ever thought about what the big, there's probably many secrets in life, right? But my big secrets in life, something that I started to really understand is that you can have more than you got because you can become more than you are. And, and, and he, th that's a big challenge, right? Because the other round is true as well. Unless you change who you are, you will always be and have what you got. So this is very important for you guys to understand. Because income, success in medical school, as a physician, as a doctor, as a surgeon, anything in life, good grades, does not far precede personal development. So what does that mean? That means that unless you grow, unless you change yourself, you won't get, nothing will change for you. So that's the major key here. My mentor once said something that I thought was really fantastic. He said, Ramon, if you divide all the money in the world equally among everybody, it will soon be back in the same pockets again. Really fantastic, right? And what does that mean? And, and, and look, life is not about just money, right? But it's, it's, it's a simple analogy for you guys to understand. So that means that even though if someone gives a person a million dollar, it's not certain that that million dollar will stay put. It's not certain that that million dollar will grow, right? So it's the mindset, it's the execution, the motivation, the strategies, the mentalities, the value that that person had brought that got him those money. So that means that if, if, if you change to become a more valuable person, you can also do valuable things. And that's really the, the major topic of this. So before we dig into, you know, different aspects of, of, of you know, how to become successful, it's, it's, it's obviously very important to understand why, what is the difference between some people, right? Why do some people succeed and others people don't? Because it's not random. It's not luck. It's not just that someone just was born into this world and said, you're going to be successful. You're not going to be successful. You're going to be successful. You're not going to do that. Absolutely not. There are things that people do that makes them successful. And so when I was a, when I was a teenager, I used to wonder how two people could work for the same company and one would make twice as much money as the other person. Two people, same age, graduated from the same school, came from the, uh, lived in the same community, worked for the same company, sold the same product and the same services, but one made $5,000 a month and the other made $10,000. That used to always, always be a curiosity of mine. And this was when I was a young teenager. I mean, I, I didn't understand things, but I used to always wonder why some people are making more and others don't make more. And everything else is the same. So what do you guys think it is? Well, it's because one person is, and this is, this is a key word I want you to understand and remember. One person is bringing more value than the other person. See, value is the word that I want you to remember from this lecture. You get paid for value. You don't get paid for time. 
You, you, be, you get successful because you bring value. So the question is, could you become more valuable in the marketplace, in medical school, as a doctor, as a surgeon, as a student? Could you become three to four times more valuable than you are right now? The answer is yes. And then you guys probably wonder, well, how? Simple answer. If you work primarily on yourself. And that's the major key here. Learning to work on yourself. How do you get top grades, the best evaluations on your rotations? How do you become a millionaire? How do you become an above average student? By becoming an above average person, developing an above average handshake, an above average smile, excitement, intensity in people, sorry, interest in people, intensity to win, study mentality. The biggest problem that you will face is to look for greatness, look to succeed in medical school or wherever the case is without becoming an above average person. So that's the major topic of this lecture, to teach and inspire you on how you can work on yourself with different tools so you can adopt them on your day-to-day -day basis. Because for things to change for you, you have to change. I don't know your life situation right now. Some of you might be very successful. Some of you might just want a little bit of extra tips. Some of you may be lost. I have no idea, right? But all I know is if you change, everything will change. If you don't change, nothing will change. So then what are the differences? So, you know, how do you increase value? Well, you know, I looked at uh, many scientific studies on valuable, like successful people. And these are most of the things things that they, they share. They make decisions and they take action. They do things even when they don't feel like it. I used to do things most of the time that I didn't feel like. Why? Because I knew that one day I can reverse that. I can do things that I like. They do the most productive thing right now. They have a positive attitude, right? See, attitude and we'll get to the mindset thing, you know, having visions and goals, we'll get to that. But it's very important to have a good vision and, and have a positive attitude. Because if you don't, it's, it's, it's uh, I'll tell you, it's very easy to be swept away by a bad day. It's, it's very easy to get depressed and down by a poor month. So it's the vision. But if you have that vision, if you have that attitude, you can pull through, even though, Everything is not going towards, you know, uh, 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 everything is not going the way you want it always. People have visions and goals. They don't let fear hold them back. They're disciplined and they, they, they remove all the distractions. They value their time highly and plan it out well. And they have an open mind and they're willing to learn new things. Listen to others that have done the same things, know the roadmap and do the same things. So the conclusion is all of these things, what does this, what does this tell you? If one person do all of these things and the other person does a couple of them or none of them, one person is bringing what? More value. Good. So why is success in medical school important? This is not something that's rocket science, right? So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide. You know, obviously you improve your knowledge in the field you will be working in. You practice on your productivity. You expand your brain. You have more choices in terms of which specialty you want to use. At least in America, the harder you work, the better grades and scores you get. You know, you can, you can pick the, whatever specialty you want, right? Most of the time. So overall, you become a better doctor, hopefully, right? And, and, and you know, the, the take-home message of this slide is that in general that your mentality should always be that in any field that you are going to, that's, that is going to be your primary job, that you want to build your career, you want to invest all the time or most of the time in it to simply be the best, right? That's, that's how you should think. That's your mentality. So it's quite obvious why one, one should succeed in medical school. So we don't need to, 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 to dwell on it much, but it's an amazing field. And, and you know, you guys have chosen the right path. And, and the, 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 the knowledge, the fact that you have the knowledge to understand the most, to me at least, important thing in life, which is health, is just fantastic, is phenomenal. 
I used to love business when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I was really good at math and physics. So I wanted to be like an engineer and go into business and mix that. But then I thought, hmm, should I really go to, you know, you know, go to school to learn how to calculate different formulas and things like that? When, 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 you know, if someone bleeds, I know, I know why someone bleeds. I know what happens. If someone would, heart would stop, I know what to do. If someone would stop breathing, I know how to save that person, at least temporarily. So it's an amazing field. And I think most of you guys know why it's important to succeed. So how do you succeed? Okay. Take home message number one, system. Okay. And system is something that I, uh, you know, it's been around for, for many, many years, right? But we, we, a lot of people just think, don't think about it in that way. I used to think about this when I was a teenager. See, everything in life has a system. The most basic thing has a system. When I get up in the morning, I have a system. I have an alarm that wakes me up. Step one. I go and drink a glass of cold lemon water. That's step two. I hop into the shower. That's step three. I, I, I brush my teeth. Step four. See? And step five, six, seven, until I get to work. See, all of these steps is a system. It's a process flow, right, that we do without thinking about it. So what I discovered in, 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 in this was in high school, I, I started noticing that a lot of smart students were not getting necessarily the best grades. And a lot of um, uh, less smart students were getting phenomenal grades. And I wonder why that was. I mean, that, that doesn't make sense, right? If, you, if you're super smart, you should technically get great grades, all of them. And if you're less smart, you know, not everybody should get. So it was something that was missing. So I started questioning. I was curious. And I started asking people. And I said, you know, I started asking them, how, how, how is it that you're getting good grades? And I noticed that people that were getting good grades was the ones that had figured out the system. They knew how to do approach physics, math, biology, biochemistry, pharmacology. They understood how they should do things. So, and this goes with everything in life. If I ask you guys, how many chefs do we have in the audience right now? How many chefs do we have? Professional chefs with a chef education. Not many, probably. But how many of you can cook food? Most, if not everybody. How? You follow a recipe. What is a recipe? Step one, put the oil. Step two, fry the onion. It's a system. And how do you learn it? You learn how to cook food by first learning the recipe. And successful businessmen knows this very well. They, they learn how to do something first, and then they do it. And getting good grades and succeed in medic success in medical school also has a system. And that's where my book comes into play. It's a systematic approach on how you succeed. So what's the problem? Is the problem you? Is the problem me? Is the problem us? Why doesn't everybody succeed? Well, it's simple. Because in today's society, not everywhere, but most places, we throw a bunch of students in a class and we expect them to know, to know, the system. We expect them to know how to study. They got, they, they made it so this far, so they, they surely must know how to figure, figure out medical school too, but not everybody does. And every program, every educational system has, has a different system. So we don't teach people how to do something before they do it. But in any other field, if you start working for Toyota, if you start working for a hospital, if you start working for Apple, Facebook, whatever the case may be, I promise you, there is a two-week orientation, a one-week orientation, a one-month learning phase where people teach you how to do things. But in school, we don't. And when we don't know how to do things, we have to figure them out. And some people do, some people don't, some people do it too late. And some people, when they don't figure things out, that's when difficulties come, obstacles come. They get bored, they get unmotivated, they quit. See, it's a vicious cycle. But if you learn to do something, 
not only will you get good at it, not only will you succeed, but it actually becomes fun. You know what to do every single time. So that's number one, system. Number two, motivation. And I love this quote. Um, my mentor once said when I was very unmotivated, he said, look, Ramon, if you want to look good in front of thousands, you have to outwork thousands in front of nobody. And what does that say? The biggest chunk of work is done when no one sees you. The biggest investment in yourself, in your studies, in your books is done when no one sees you. You can look at a successful person. You can say, oh, my God, he's so successful, blah, blah, blah. But trust me, he spent those 10,000 hours when nobody was watching him. When I was in high school, 80% of my day, I did things that I didn't want to do. But I did them because I said, one day, that percentage will reverse. And that's a general concept you have to understand. Not everything will be fun in med school. Not all courses are very interesting. Not every lecture is going to be uh, an inspirational bomb. There are things you have to do in life, even when you don't feel like doing them. It's as simple as that, but most people don't. And that's where motivation comes in, right? You have to be motivated. Everything we do, we drink water, we're motivated to drink water because we're thirsty. We eat food, we're hungry, we're motivated. So how do you, what is motivation? How does motivation come? Motivation comes by seeing a reward in the things you want to do and valuing the importance of the rewards. And I'll try to explain what I mean with that and you'll get it in a second. It's a little bit, it could be a little bit confusing. But <clears throat> let's say um, when, I was, when I was growing up in Sweden, I used to hate winters. It was cold, it was rainy, and Sweden is, you know, in the Northern Europe, so, it, you know, it's, it's most of the year it's cold, right? And, and when it was wintertime, it was even more cold, and it was more icy, and it was more rainy. And, and, and so I had a tough time. I had a really tough time in winters, but I kept motivating myself by seeing my long-term rewards. I learned how to motivate myself through all the difficulties and all the obstacles that I was facing. You see, most people are not motivated enough. So as soon as something becomes hard, they quit. They give up. They're like, I don't want to do this. This, this, is, this is hard. This is, I don't feel like doing this. So if you know this, if you understand that most people are not very self-motivated, then by you understanding this concept and motivating yourself, you will already set yourself in a competitive advantage. The ability to self-motivate yourself every single day on a constant basis. You have to learn, as I learned, how to handle the winters because they come right after fall every year. Some are long, some are short, some are worse, some are better, but they keep on coming. So you can't change the seasons, right? But, what, but you can change the way you look at it. You can't change the way life treats you. Right? You, must, you can't change that you're going to have obstacles. You can't change your circumstances. So you must learn how to handle the difficulties. Because most of the time, they all actually come after an opportunity. You must learn how to handle mistakes, hardness, hardship, and everything else in life that makes things tough and that makes you unmotivated. So the lesson here is to learn how to handle things by self-motivating yourself. How do you handle it? Well, you can't get rid of January or, or I couldn't get rid of December by turning off the calendar, right? And it came every year. But here's the thing. This is, this is one thing you can do. You can be smarter. You can get wiser. You can get better. You can get stronger. The winters won't change, but you can change. The obstacles will always be there in life. Everybody faces them. But the only way to grow through them is that you change yourself and you change your mentality. So instead of wishing when it's winter, I wish it was summer. Oh, I don't feel this. I don't feel like getting up in the morning. 
instead of thinking, oh, it's so hard, I don't want to do this. My philosophy to you is don't wish things were easier. Whenever you face something, wish, don't say, oh, I wish this was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. And don't wish for less challenges. When you see a challenge in life, don't say, oh my God, I wish this was easier for me, less challenging. Wish for more wisdom. That's the key. Keep telling that to yourself every day. Because studying is hard. I'm not going to sit here and say it's easy. I'm not going to sit here and say that success in medical school or anything in life is easy. I would lie to you if I said that. But if I ask you how many people wants to be successful, how many people wants to make a million dollars salary a year, how, most people would say yes. But watching TV all day, playing video games, studying is not going to give you that. So always value the long-term awards before the short-term awards. See, playing video games or, or, or watching a show or being with your friends or going to a club and partying, that gives you that instant dopamine release, right? It's fun in the moment. But how much will value will that give to your life? Not much. But studying every day, getting a good grade on your physics, uh, on, your, on your biochemistry, and then getting a good grade on your, on your evaluation and, and getting into the residency program that you want, becoming a successful lady, those things collectively, it's long term. They're not instantly going to give you a, 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 a great feeling, but long term, it will probably be the best investment you ever do. Execution. Some of the most unhappiest people in the world are the people who dream but never execute. This is, this is so true. So, see, dreams and goals, most people have. If you ask 100 people, what is your biggest dreams? I promise you, 80, 90% will say, oh, I have dreams of becoming this. I have dreams of becoming an astronaut. I have dreams of becoming a, a surgeon. I have a dream of becoming an IDAR, ophthalmologist. But without execution, you won't get it. And one of the biggest reasons people fail is that they don't have a good execution, st execution strategy. And that's where my book comes into play. It doesn't just teach you what you need to do, but also how to do it, how to plan it well, so you can actually also do it. Because at the end of the day, I can teach you everything, right? I can tell you, this is the system. This is how you motivate yourself. This is how you bring value. But I can't do the work for you. Only you can do the work. So what does this tell you? This tells you that you have to take full responsibility of what happens to you, accepting full responsibility. People have a list of reasons for why they're not doing well and why they don't execute, just so they can explain and come with excuses. But the biggest reason for failure is that they don't execute. Either they're lazy, they don't know how to, whatever the case may be. They don't work hard for something that they really want. This is hard work. This is not easy, but it's doable. It's definitely doable. So everybody wants to be successful, right? But very few knows how to do it. And very few actually work hard for it. And they blame things. You know, I, I've had people, students blaming the teachers. I've had students blaming the school, their background. I had people blaming the government, the taxes, the prices, the weather, the traffic whatever. And I could have done the same. I could have blamed multiple things. I could have blamed that I wasn't born in Sweden, that Swedish was not my first language, that I had to flee the war. But you have to understand that life is not fair and it will never be fair. Still to this day, I get a lot of obstacles, a lot of hard times, but I keep on executing because you get the same you can't expect to get the same opportunities in the foundation as everyone else. Wherever your life situation is right now, you have to understand that that is what you are in. So you have to play the cards that you're dealt and actually play it, execute it. So you have to plan things well and work hard for them. You have to have an execution strategy because it's not what happens that determines the quality and quantity of your life. And that's because what happens to you, okay, whether it's hard to execute or easy to execute, happens to everybody. See, the sun goes down and up for all of us. The same thing happens to two different people, but one gets successful in medical school and one does not. One 
matches their 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 the the best uh, um, uh, specialty program that they want, and one does not. So what happens? It's not what happens to you that changes things. It's because what happens is is the same for all of us. It's what you do that is the difference. When you're in school, all of you have the same teacher, same books. You're in the same classroom. You have the same time. Remember the analogy about how two different people are working for the same company. One get, you know, makes more money than the other. It's the same in medicine. But one or a few people choose to do things differently. One should choose to work harder, execute better, plan things better. And they put more effort. All this combined, they bring more value to himself and to his studies. And but value means that you get better outcomes. So it's how you execute that is going to be one of the primary differentiators of how you're going to succeed, not what happens to you. Never forget that. Mindset. So <clears throat> a lot of us, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a very, very famous quote about Confucius that he said, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. And I believe that, right? It's the mindset of that you believe, your belief process that you know that I can do this. Ramon tells me I can do this. I can do this. It's going to be hard, but I can still do it. If I work hard, have good goals, plan it well, have a right mindset, motivate myself, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I can do this. So a lot of this is the willingness to change your mindset and habit. A lot of people, they don't think they can do the things that everybody else has done that they look up to. So you have to write a list of everything you want to do and really start working on your mindset to make it more positive and understand that even you, regardless of where you are in life, you can do it. So if you look at all the successful business people and medical people, they always started with a vision and the belief that they could do it. Everybody did that, including me. And when we hire people in America, doctors, surgeons, whatever the case may be, we look for intelligence, energy, enthusiasm, and integrity. And what does integrity mean? It means discipline, strong moral principles, and the right mindset. Because even when you start working, don't think that that's going to be easy. Working brings a different set of challenges. But you can really work hard on your mindset to go through all those challenges. So the willingness to work hard, that's the mindset you have to have with your study. To work hard now and hopefully relax later. And if you have that mindset, if you change it, then you can do this you can do the most incredible thing. Goal setting. <clears throat> so setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible to the visible. So um, goals in general, simple, you have to have, you have to have goals, right? You have to have a vision. And, and how do you get it? Well, goals come from reasons, you know, I ask people sometimes, go write down um, a list of your goals. Uh, my mentor told me that when I was, uh, when I was in medical school. He said, um, let me see your goals. I said, um, I don't have any. He said, well, maybe they're, maybe they're in the car. Or maybe they're in your desk. I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. My, I'm in medical school. I want to just finish medical school. He said, no. See, um, why do you want to do something, right? Why do you want to become someone? Why do you want to become a doctor? Or why do you become, want to become a, 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 a doctor in that specific specialty? Um, there's a reason for it, right? Um, and, and if you have enough reasons, um, uh, that's when your goals and visions come into play. And, and regardless of where you are in life, I don't think necessarily you're educational performance right now indicates how smart you are, intelligent you are. I think you can be better. I think you can be smarter. I can, you, you can become more successful in medical school or, or going on your way to medical school by just having enough reasons. And people have different reasons, right? They could be economical, personal, family. Uh, 
personal reasons, you know, some people do it for recognition, for respect. Um, um, I want to make sure that you guys have enough personal and, and, and family, whatever goal they are, to become successful in medicine. But that is first by setting up these goals. And you have short-term goals versus long-term goals. Your, your long-term goals may be the things that you want to be in 30, 40 years, right? You want to become a, a successful surgeon, for instance. And then you have the short-term goals on how to work towards those uh, 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 to work towards that long-term goal. By doing these short-term goals you will add, and, and reaching those milestones, you will reach your long-term goals. So plan, write down your goals, very important. Something magic happens when you write down your goals. Put your goals in a notebooks. One of the major people that, one of the biggest successful people I know in medicine, they have goals every single week every single month, every single year. Um, and I did this. I did this myself. And then you have to plan your goals and you have to work on your goals. So planning and prioritizing. So in medical school, you will have many different courses. You'll have assignments, you'll have exams, you'll have reports, you have rotations. It's a lot of different things to juggle at the same time. OK, and people usually when people fail, one of the reasons is that I've noticed is that they fail to plan accurately. See, you have to know what you're doing every single day. So you already know that you have to have a goal and vision, motivate yourself and then execute. Right. So so but but to execute, you need a good plan. You need to prioritize things correctly and right. There's so much to do that if you don't have a good plan, you will fail very quickly. And in my book, I have a big chapter on how to plan and prioritize things well, based on subjects, courses, rotations, everything that you write down and plan it depend in relation to the amount of time you have. Because we all have 24 hours in a day, but if we use them well, we can not only study well, we can not only go to, go to our school, but we can also do other things. And there was a research done on, on um, one of some of the most successful businessmen in, 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 um, uh, in the world. And, one of the mo and they asked them, how did you become so successful? One of the biggest thing they said was that they planned everything in so much detail that they knew what to do every 30 minutes. So they didn't lose time. They didn't waste time because the time is important too, right? If you had 30 years to finish medical school, that would be a piece of cake. But you only have, depending on which country you are, four years to six years. So you have to know what you're doing to not waste that time. Study techniques. So remember that everything in life has a system. So I told you guys that, right? I introduced you the mindset of everything in life has a system. And to be successful, as I mentioned, you first have to learn the system and then start pursuing it, right? You have to first understand what should I do in pharmacology? What should I do in biochemistry? What should I do in anatomy before you start pursuing it? And in my book, I have outlined all these principles on how to do in every single course category. It would be very boring if I sat here today and said, okay, anatomy, this is what step one, this is what you do. Step two, this is what you do. Step three, this is what you do. Step four, this is what you do. You guys all have that in the book. The most important thing to understand is when you get out today to understand that before you start studying, learn the study techniques. Every successful person that has gotten good grades in medical school, that has gotten good scores on their, on their you know, final exams or whatever the case may be, they know how to do things correctly. They know how to do things better. And some of you may have to do things a little bit more depending on you know, how, how well you retain, right? I maybe need to read a book 10 times before I understand 90% of the content. Some people need to read it twice, but regardless what it is, we can all get there by having the correct study techniques. So never give up, right? Will it be easy? No. Will it be worth it? Absolutely. So 
success in medical school is, is, is rough, is frustrating, is time consuming. It requires a lot of effort, discipline, a lot of sleepless nights. We all will feel like this, right? We all will feel the, oh, I don't want to do this. I give up. And this is the exact reason why few gets very successful. Some get successful and some don't get successful because they give up as soon as it gets tough. Now you know what to do when it gets tough. Now you know that most people are not motivated. Enough. Now you understand to value the long-term uh, um, uh, rewards and things. Now you understand that if you just do those things, you will already set yourself in a higher competitive advantage. So just accept that things are difficult in life. And typically the harder things are, the better the reward is. Good things don't come easy. And when you understand that concept, you focus on your goals, your vision, and keep working hard regardless of how tough it gets. One day you will look back and it will all be worth it. But the most important is that you will go through this whole program. So what do you do next? So this lecture might have inspired some of you motivated some of you, cause anxiety to some of you, some of you love it, some of you might hate it. Whatever you do, if you really want to become successful, remember, step one is to really read the systems, the techniques, and all the things that I've mentioned in this lecture is way more comprehensive than the book, but it gives you a guide that you have to learn the system, the theories, reflect on yourself, and the change that needs to happen to become successful starts primarily on yourself. Change the things that you don't like. Develop good habits. Get yourself motivated, even when it's tough. Get the right mindset. You can do this. Everybody can do this. Everybody can get into medical school, become a successful uh, uh, student, and then become a successful do doctor. Plan your studies. We all have 24 hours. Set up your goals. Learn to study techniques, as I mentioned, and never give up. I usually, um, I have a lot of um, uh, mentoring on my social medias. So if there's any of you that are interested, follow me on my Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. I would love to collaborate with all of you. I do offer consultations for students. I've consulted thousands of students. Uh, and so I'm happy to do the same thing for you. And then stay humble. The things you take for granted, someone else is praying for. So don't worry, don't, don't get stressed out. Everybody can do this. It's just about learning the system. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.